A lot of my Indian friends struggle with rupees. Well, you have 1 crore equal 10 million and 1 lakh equal 100,000. So when you want to format a number, you cannot format it like this. You have to format it like this. Let me show you two ways to do it. Let's go. Some of you might be wondering why do I have this video because I can just select my numbers like this and then I go to home number, click on this arrow and I have currency. If I just go down for English India, so I need to click a few times, you have it here, press OK, you get the currency correct but the problem is the comma is not at the right place. So no lakhs, no crores, no bueno. This is why I'm going to show you those two methodologies. Now let's press Ctrl Z. And let's start with the first one, which is about changing the regional settings. So here I'm just going to type under search regional and I have set regional format. So I click on it. In this window, I just go down and I have regional format English United States. So I can select English India. There we go. It's here. We close the window. And now if we select our data, we need to do a check. So we go under home number. We click on the arrow. We go back to currency and under none, I need to see this rupee. If I don't see it, for example, you see a US dollar. The only thing you need to do is close your Excel file and open it again. And it's going to work. In my case, I'm just going to select the rupee and press OK. And now you get the right format. So you have the comma and then you have two digits and then another comma. So that's cool. If you try, for example, selecting any number, now you can press Ctrl Shift 4 and it will format it for you automatically. Now, the problem with this approach is that if you put the file in another computer with different regional settings, then it's not going to show you the desired output. This is why I'm going to show you how to do it with custom formatting. So now we're going to use this crazy formula. If you don't understand custom formatting and you don't want to bother, you can just apply it as is. And if you want to know more about custom formatting, I have a video about the subject you can find the link in the description. But give me a chance, I'm going to explain it to you and you're going to see it's super simple. So if we look at this expression, it has three conditions and they are separated by semicolons. So this is the first one, I copy pasted it in green. The second one is here, I copy pasted it in red. And finally, you have the last one, which is in orange. Let's dissect them one by one. So first of all, if we look at the first one, you have a condition bigger or equal than 10 million, which is in brackets. Then I want to apply this format. If it's false, it means it's smaller than 10 million. Then you will check the second condition. The second condition is bigger or equal than 100,000, which means between 100,000 and 10 million. In this case, I want to apply this format. And for all other cases, I want this format. Now look at this. You have a lot of zeros and hashes. It looks scary. But don't worry, if we go to codes, we find zero here, display insignificant zeros, and hash, display significant digits. Sounds gibberish. Let me show you an example to understand this. So let's go back. We can put 12 here and select it. Let's go directly to the arrow, custom format. Now you have the sample here, 12, and I'm going to start with a hash. A hash will display all significant digits. So here you have two significant digits. So it will display them. If you add more hashes, nothing happens. Now let's look at zero. Zero will force the number to be at least one digit. So here I have two digits. It's fine. Here I need at least two digits. So that's 12 still. But if I put a third zero, I get hit. Because now I want the number to be at least three digits. And I have only two. This is why you get a zero in front. So let's press OK and apply the concept to our numbers. So here... I want a number to be at least one digit and then I have the comma here. Since I have the comma, I need to fill the number with other significant digits. So here I am putting all the hashes. For example, if you have 99,000, it will be 99, comma, and then 000. Perfect. Let's look at the second example. It is similar to this one. So the last part is the same. Then we have the comma and we have the hashes. The only difference is that I have a backslash here. Why? Well, if we go here and we go to the backslash, you will see that it will allow to keep special characters. For example, if you have 100 to 1, you want to keep the two dots. So you'll put a backslash here in front of the two dots. It is the same for me for the commas. At the last part, I have three digits and Excel is used to have three digits between commas. 
but here I only have two digits. So I put the backslash to preserve the comma. And it's the same here. If we look at the first one, it is the same concept. I just have more numbers. Now that we have all this, we can just apply it. So I'm just going to go Ctrl C, Escape, select those numbers. Then you go to Home Number, the arrow, you know it by now, Custom, and we apply this. We press OK and we get everything the right way. Now you will tell me that those currency symbols are not aligned. You can do something to align them. Let me show you. You can use in the codes, you have the asterisk, repeat following character until width of cell is filled. So here I need to add spaces to put between the currency and the number. So if we go and for example, we apply it here. So we have the currency. Let's add a star and then a space. So we're going to repeat spaces until we fill the cell. Press OK. You can see the effect and we can do the same for all the other ones. So my second condition is here. I'm going to put after the rupee an asterisk and a space. And for the last one, asterisk space, press OK. And now they are better aligned.